Good morning to one and all present here. It is a privilege to be gathered here on the online platform for today's webinar on introduction to maritime terminologies through Indian Garage of Goods by C Act 1925. Mark Gregorius College of Law, managed and run by Siro Malankara Church, has a long tradition of engagement involving educational excellence. Our institution, established in the year 2012, has now over 900 students and offers four different programs, which include BA LLB, BBA LLB, BCom LLB, and LLM. It is today a proud holder of Silf Milat Institutional Excellence Award received in the year 2017 and is also identified as an emerging institution of excellence. It is indeed an honor to have with, the, our, with us today our honorable guest speaker, senior advocate VJ Matthew, sir. Uh, he is a designated senior advocate of the High Court of Kerala and presently he is also the chairman of the Kerala Maritime Board. He is also the vice chairman of Indian Maritime Law Association affiliated to CMI, which is a forum of maritime lawyers, ship owners, shipping companies, ports and port operators. Senior advocate VJ Matthew has appointed as the member of the International Maritime and Law Transport Transport Law Committee, London, as officer in charge of the Asian countries. He is the first Indian to be appointed in the said position. He is a member of various international associations for attorney, attorneys and arbitrators. He is a well-known maritime lawyer in India, having completed 39 years of practice and has advised many ports, which also includes Cochin and other shipyards, ship owners, steamer agents, PNI clubs and has appeared in many sensational cases, including the recent Italian vessel Enrica Lexi case. He is the senior partner of VJ Matthew and Company, international law firm, having offices at all the almost all the major Indian ports, cities, and has appeared before all Indian High Courts and Supreme Court of India. He is he also attends regularly foreign and international arbitrations. He is more specialized in admiralty, shipping, maritime claims, arrest of vessels, arbitrations, cargo claims, charter party disputes, ship management disputes, crew wages, writs and other matters related to customs, port trust, corporate commercial litigations, international law, international trade, commercial fraud, claims and arbitrations. He always has shown courage to fight against port, customs or any government authority if he sees any injustice. Welcome, sir. We also have among us advocate Vipin P. Vargas. He is a lawyer in the High Court of Kerala with over 15 years of experience and is an expert in maritime law, corporate laws and arbitration and also deals with marine insurance. Uh, he is presently the partner of VJ Matthew and Company. He has made appearances before the Supreme Court of India, various high courts in India. Um, he is an alumnus of National University of Advanced Legal Studies. Um, Mr. Vipin P. Vargas is also a notary public and presently the standing counsel of various corporations in the High Court of Kerala, including Greater Kochi Development Authority, Kerala Cashnet Corp Development Corporation, Birmingham International Seaport, Kerala State Electricity Regulatory Commission, etc. He is also in the panel of lawyers for various banks, including Punjab National Bank and Bank of Baroda. He also serves as the panel lawyer for Kerala Startup Mission and New India Assurance Company Limited. He holds a diploma on, in entrepreneurship administration, business law, cyber law, labor laws, administrative law, and also in fintech law and policy. He is also the visiting faculty of various universities and takes classes in maritime law and maritime insurance. Uh, IMO, etc. Uh, welcome, sir. Now I'd like to invite our beloved Vice Principal, Professor Do Dr. Thomas Aguti PG, to welcome our distinguished speakers. Good morning and welcome to Ananda, all assembled in this online platform for the webinar on Introduction to Maritime Term Terminologies through Indian Carriage of Goods by Sea Act 1925. It is my privilege to welcome the guests of the day and also the participants. Since uh, my senior members in the faculty in the terms of principal, director, and many others are engaged in the legal aid clinic, the program is going on in collaboration with the uh, district and state uh, 
legal cell authorities at uh, Panjayat at Kilimanur. I'm interested with this responsibility to welcome the guests. I thank them for the, me to interesting this responsibility. We are fortunate to have uh, with us senior advocate VJ Matthew, who will deliver the inaugural address. Since uh, Ms. Silpa, the befitting introduction to the person and their at. So I'm not entering into the details of the person. Of course, it will be more uh, befitting for you to know more from through his talk, which will be following the introductory remark by me. Now, for us, Mark Riori's College of Law is always happy to collaborate and associate with the dignitaries like uh, Advocate Vijay Matthew, not only in this uh, online platform, but also in future. I hope and assume that in future we may have formal collaboration with the firm which is run and managed by Pro Dr. Sorry, I'm Advocate Vijay Matthew. And uh, on behalf of the principal, Dr. P.C. John, the director, Reverend Dr. Koshi, I said, Punda model, sir, I extend a very, very cordial welcome to you to this webinar and also to Mark Gregory's College of Law. Now we have a young and a dynamic person who is uh, going to give the keynote address for the morning session. And the, we, Mr. Vipin P. Vogue is, is also well known and an established uh, lawyer of repute. And his presence is a very soothing experience for us. Sir, we are very happy to you have to with us in this morning. And on behalf of the MGCL family, I extend you a very cordial welcome. And I am not using the word family in a ceremonial way, because those who collaborate work with us in MGCL eventually become family members that start with the faculty, the guests which associate with us, and even our students and even the parents. So that is a culture which we maintain with Mark Gregory's College of Law. I hope and pray that you'll also extend your valuable service to Mark Gregory's College of Law for the academic excellence of the institution, which is going for NAC accreditation very soon, which will be the first law college in Kerala who is venturing into or daring to go for a NAC accreditation. So, sir, very cordially I welcome you to this uh, academic banquet. I have to extend a word of thanks and welcome to Professor P.C. John, our principal, Professor Ramchandran Nair, our vice principal, Dr. Jijimon, head of the department, and our director, Reverend Dr. Koshi Isaac Punyamut. I hope they will join shortly because they, probably they were on the way to Kilimanur, but they will also join it. And also extend a very cordial welcome to senior faculty members and other faculty members your supportive staff and uh, especially for organizing this wonderful seminar or webinar rather for a uh, teacher and the support by Vinilal sir and technical support extended by Vinilal sir and other supportive staff. And uh, with a wish to have a very fruitful academic session in the morning, I wish you all a good day and may God bless all of us. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite Senior Advocate Vijay Matthew for the inaugural address. <clears throat> Thank you, Shilpa, for the nice introduction. You have, you have mentioned so many legal matters, Charter Party, Admiralty, but because of the COVID for the last two years, internationally, the number of cases is, are very few globally, and it has come up in the 2021 late. And uh, most respected uh, Professor uh, Thomas Kurti, Vice Principal, Professor uh, Gigi Mohan, Coordinator, Professor Gismol was coordinating with us, and uh, Director of this institution, of course, Shilpa and uh, I would like to know uh, how many students are attending. Any students are attending or only faculty? Uh, no, sir. We have 52 uh, students attending right now. Okay. Thank you. So uh, I'm given uh, this 9.40 to 10. OK, fine. It is good to know that uh, Mark Gregorio's College of Law understand part of our former Mari Venice College, where I used to come for uh, playing basketball in the late 70s and early 80s. It's showing interest uh, in maritime law. 
recently i met uh, your uh, respected uh, director uh, dr koshi isaac and uh, professor dr tom suti in a, in a meeting organized by a group of lawyers in chandra who wanted to be branded as maritime lawyers in the late 50s and 60s anticipating the upcoming adani port in chandra i like the those seniors enthusiasm seniors mainly from chandra bar and their motivation and uh, of course their intention to come up as maritime lawyers if students of your age shilpa try now you can become a maritime lawyer uh, or a maritime professional so uh, another uh, 10 to 15 years like we been for that you have to do the internship with uh, maritime law firms not only in kerala uh, you have your uh, lawyers in chennai mumbai and calcutta of course ahmed ahmed bad is there very few so if possible after law degree as a junior and professors you should also uh, direct the students for doing internship uh, not only the usual civil and criminal law firms uh, there are other law firms uh, which we may not uh, expect if you go to bombay and delhi and they can also even go abroad also if possible after law degree as uh, you should work as juniors and associates of some maritime lawyers tomorrow once you prove your professional competency you will be selected in the firm you can become the partner of the firm you can start on practice even as a partner of the firm you were selected uh, from wells so now it is 15 years i think uh, now is known more than me in among the clients and the judges but it is not that easy to become a maritime lawyer like any other subject you are dealing with the indian and international shipping community mainly foreigners foreign clients indian clients uh, the, the most important thing for every person any lawyer is even though it is a must your trustworthiness your character your behavior your attitude your body language of course your appearance appearance means not in color or something you 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 should be well they they will express something your language skill to deal with a foreigner i studied in a normal christian school in kochi in fort kochi i'm not a catholic or a hardcore believer or activist but still i joined for my pre degree in another school college called sacred college tevra most of the finals during that time will be with mari banjus and sacred college for basketball so for a degree also i joined there i believe that a good student is shaped by a school teacher by a school and particularly teachers uh, even after uh, when i joined pre degree uh, one of the professor for uh, science his father was medical even after four decades even myself my family my children are, are keeping close relation with this teacher father roshan muradika used to call my wife and say about their uh, studies about their career marriages and uh, whenever my name is seen in some tv or news immediately he will call me so that relation you have to keep up with your uh, school and college teachers and of course you have to maintain the relation with your seniors even now the father uh, ashwin medical i think till, till last month he was working with rajgir medical college he was the vice principal of sacred college then became manager then he did for a rajgir school he used to send the updated whatsapp messages also even political and otherwise can you imagine he used to take me so I, i was an sfi activist to the the canteen of priest then after the basketball he used, he used to take us to his canteen and we will get good beef pork and chapati usually the same my priest food pattern so 50% character of a student is acquired from the family parents siblings of course some genes also there 50% you imbibe from the teachers school and colleges and friends during the younger days you love certain subjects because of the teachers so i, I like the teacher uh, during my 7th standard so so i had a keen interest for science so for pre degree as well as for degree also i took the science group and don't wonder that uh, 80 to 90% of the high court judges including krishnayar and uh, subramanian bhuti sir they were all taken either botany or zoology 
I had uh, six classmates of mine who were high court judges. He recently retired, right from Ramanandar Manon. Mr. Shafiq was a student of uh, Marivan College, where we met first time when he came for the basketball game. He was my classmate in law college also. So everyone studied for science. During that time, law degree was the least opted course. I'm born in a family of shipping. My family, father was a shipping CEO. And don't wonder that till his death, he has not given me a single shipping case. So see, he never advised me to go for uh, shipping or according to him, I have to find my own ways. That was a, a pattern of all parents, not like now. Now parents take uh, my son, like my son and daughter for the entrance exam, everything. Even, even my law college entry, don't quote anywhere. Myself and one of the judges of the High Court later became the Chief Justice. <clears throat> we, along with one of our classmates inside that college, was passing through the road in the park, near the park, Central Church College, Myers College, and Law College. So we went to Law College to take an application for uh, my friend, not uh, the judge. So we also thought we also take two more applications. Since we both, myself and the, 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 the retired judge, we have good marks, we got admission. There was no test at that time. The other gentleman didn't get an admission. He's a customs commissioner in Mumbai. But that is, that is, that is how I came to the law profession. And like a student, a lawyer's career is also shaped by the office he joined. That is very important. And the senior with whom you undergo your training, 50% of the lawyer's character, I swear, 50% of the lawyer's character is imbibed from the parents' genetic, as I said. 50% of this from your senior. For the first office you join for the first five years. First five years, what you see, what you draft in the office, what you hear from the office, what you, what your senior asks you to submit in court, what misle or misleading the court or fraud or cheating, dishonesty to clients, society, disrespect to the court. Everything you learn from that uh, office. So 100% of these traits will become part of your life. That won't change even if you become a high court or Supreme Court judge. I can show you many living examples. I'm not daring to take it. I can say a litmus test of a lawyer, when a junior or any, anybody you are meeting for the first time, what we used to ask is, uh, where, where were you earlier? Uh, who, who, you're practicing with which law firm? Then you will say that, uh, so office. Okay, okay, okay. Office junior lawyer. Fortunately, I was going to a parents who lived their life for children and shaping our character. From where you learn discipline, honesty, love, and sympathy. Of course, the bad qualities of parents and teachers also occur to a certain extent. A good teacher can create a good student. A good parent and a good senior can create good lawyers. So, if you are a lawyer, you are a lawyer, you are a lawyer, you are a lawyer, you are a lawyer. We have a good team of lawyers which we select mainly from our interns, as I told you. When one intern works with us physically, now we, now we are doing online intern, and of selected, we are doing physical laws. You can easily understand the, 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 the character, the working pattern of the, those interns. So that, way, that is how we select uh, lawyers in our firm. We have a good clients and good lawyer friends globally, which we attain in my last four decade practice. And we maintain good relation with them, mutual respect, honesty, professional competency, friendship, trustworthiness, because we are, you are dealing with cases of worth millions. A single trust or dishonesty will spoil your character and don't think that you can come back. They are entrusting us without any court fee, without any fees, a big case for you, trusting you, you have to deal with them. Uh, that is how the, the, the our uh, mutual respect and uh, belief you know, develop. There is not shortcut to become a good maritime lawyer. Particularly one maritime, particularly the number one maritime lawyer, but never expect to become a judge. 
if you are a maritime lawyer. Because by the time you, you, you are qualified to be a judge, if you have a lucrative practice, nobody will recommend your name for a judge. Maybe because of your lucrative practice. I am humbled down to say that with proud and remembering my parents, my seniors. My senior was uh, P. Radhakrishna, uh, brother of late uh, Justice Janagyamma. Now, senior is also no more. He passed away recently. A true gentleman of the High Court. Then, with my well wishers, eminent maritime lawyers like J late Supreme Court Judge Justice Kochidam, he was the first maritime lawyer. This is uh, Matthews P. Matthews, Ira. after that Ira. Both were my father's friends because my father was in shipping. They were also de dealing with the PNI and shipping. So that is how they developed. And even I remember once, uh, this is Matthews P. Matthews, before he passed away in the early 50s, he came to my house to see my father. He said, Matthew, you ask your father to give some, take some good shipping cases. But uh, unfortunately, he has not given me any single shipping case till that was his policy. And now we have uh, reached a stage. We may be the number one in Kerala. And our firm is one of the best firm in Kerala. And we are within the first five in India. Probably I can say. This we attain through trust, honesty, hardship, and opportunities. Not shortcut to become any lawyer, any successful lawyer or shipping lawyer. And one thing with shipping lawyer is that even my friends, they're all free after Friday evening. There is no high court on Saturday and Sunday. They used to tell that, why should you again look at the email, mobile? Because a single email and WhatsApp is our a call from our client or something. So myself and my office will be always alert for a WhatsApp or email. Even if we go for a tour, we'll get a, a, a call or an email. Many times, my, my associate, Vibin used to tell me, sir, once in a while you have to go to Muna. So whenever I used to move, go to Muna, on the way I'll get a call. So we are forced to work around the clock. Unlike other lawyers, we have to give the advice also immediately. They expect, they can't say that you bring the file, bring the documents, come after a week. They will just email or uh, send the documents. You have to peruse. Immediately, they expect some time. That is the international standard. That is our uh, strength. And of course, you should have an element of luck. I like to be, to bond to a good parent, luck like for a, to, to uh, get a good education, like to join a good office, like to get good cases. Even, even if you are an academician or taken any degree, unless and until you get good cases to prove your excellence, you can't be a good lawyer. A career of a lawyer, in the, during the career, you should expect some sensational case will come for a change in your fate. We have come across many internationally and nationally noted shipping cases. And uh, as you said uh, during my Shilpa said uh, during introduction, Henry Galaxy case in 2011 or 12, the Italian vessel. You won't believe that uh, myself and Vipin and then team, I think Vijesh, we fought with all government agencies, state agency, national agencies, IB, NIA, so many agencies. For 72 days, they all opposed the release of the vessel. For 72 days, we approached the High Court, uh, Division Bench, then Supreme Court. After 72 days, the vessel was released. And it took 10 years to finish the case, even up to the International Court. Until now, I think it is not at close, some more uh, release of bond and other compensation is still pending. So this is how some, some case will come up during your way. Uh, and recently, you might have heard, uh, it is not a, that much sensation, uh, two Pakistani nationals, that they came for a treatment in Kochi. They, the, the doctor and the hospital have complied all the statutory formalities required under Section 14 of the Foreigners Act. The day 
when they landed, they informed everything. Every day, the special branch used to visit them. Even before uh, leaving the country, they also informed them. And of course, uh, the, the police uh, declined the clearance certificate. Then we approached the High Court. And uh, I think, uh, if I will send you the, the judgment, it's a, I think it may go for a reported judgment. Justice Haripal. And if I continue my talk like this, I think my time is almost over. I think it depends on how our hours is dating to give a good talk on COPSA. And before closing, I can uh, mention you for your information. Apart from maritime lawyers, many, many, some of the lawyers, some of the students may not uh, have that uh, taste to become lawyers. They can be, apart from maritime lawyers, you can, uh, your good career for, so for employment with the Director General of Shipping, Mercantile Marine Department, that is central government, and also abroad, uh, UN, IMO, there are so many organizations, shipping companies, ship management companies, ship owners, fleet, like, like fleets, energy, hundreds of ship management companies. Now, now there are a lot of PPP ports, private public management ports, even in India, Adani, JM Baxi, Dubai ports, Singapore ports. In India also you'll get job, abroad also. Of course, maritime law, you can select. If you decide to go for maritime, I would say, if I am born in 2000, I would, go, I would have opted a law firm abroad. p and clubs, p and correspondents, shipping lines, Steamer agents, shipyards, public private shipyards, state maritime boards, teaching. Some students would like to teach. You got, there are a lot of maritime universities coming up Indian Maritime University, Gujarat Maritime University. Kerala Maritime Board is also planning to uh, change our present maritime training academy to Kerala Maritime University. And uh, as Professor said, there are good scope for maritime boat to associate with the uh, Marivania School of Law. And uh, there are other offshore shipping companies, patrolling companies, and a lot of, lot of opportunities. So I'm winding up. See you soon in some other seminar. All the very best to the students. Thank you, Director. Father um, Koshi Isaac and, and the management of uh, School of Law students. We can uh, soon expect some form of association with the uh, Vijay Mathurin Company or Kerala Maritime Board with your uh, School of Law. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It is now time to invite our keynote speaker for the day, Advocate Vipin P. Vargas, to take over the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Shilpa. Respected white vice principal, the professors who are attending this online event, dear students, it is quite overwhelming for me to hear my mentor, my senior in the first place, and then to come and teach each and every one of you on the basic terminologies of the maritime law or rather which are stated in the carriage of goods by sea act i'm i heard from uh, shilpa that there are around 52 students who are sitting here i should actually say that it is a great opportunity for each and of you to be sitting here and listening to me not because i'm the speaker but you are actually getting a venue to listen to a unique kind of law which is called the maritime law now maritime is one law which has actually traveled beyond boundaries beyond territories and it has more international law application than any other law in 
and maritime law is one law that actually survive till the end of the world because as long as the world exists there should be a trade existing i recollect a period before 20 years when i was a law student in national university of advanced legal studies i had a little knowledge of maritime law and i was looking for an opportunity to learn more about maritime law but unfortunately there weren't any such seminars conferences which actually could pass on to the students or there were not many of classes that were taken in those days fortunately for me in the final year of my college i had maritime law as my class uh, as one of my subject and immediately after attending the class i was definitely sure that this is going to be my career i checked for my best option available in india and it is how i got connected with vk matthew and company which is one of the pioneer maritime law firms in south india in india we are one of the best law firms in south india with regard to maritime law and matthew sir is the senior advocate first senior advocate who is uh, an advocate who is specialized in maritime law to become a senior advocate so uh, we had we had made great contributions in maritime law till today and we will continue to do that but this is an opportunity for each and every one of you to know more about maritime law but maritime law i'm maritime law is one subject which actually cannot be taught in a day like matthew sir said for you to understand maritime law you should first have a little bit of taste for maritime law you should actually understand maritime law maritime law cannot be taught just through books because it is widely uh, it's a little beyond what you could perceive or you could actually understand in the books because it travels territories it travel boundaries and it has a far reaching effect it is always necessary for each one of you to do online internships or uh, or internships with maritime law firms to understand more about maritime law so my endeavor here is not to teach you much on maritime law there are a lot of acts i'm not even touching the coxa indian carriage of goods by sea act i'm not even touching the act because i'm sure that if i talk to you on the technicalities the provisions of the indian carriage of goods by sea act by within a period of 15 minutes i will be hearing more students snoring here than listening to me my endeavor is simple i will try to introduce you to maritime world i will try to show you what are the different terminologies that are used in maritime law my endeavor is to create simplest just for you to understand maritime law so that tomorrow after the session or after some period when you read something on maritime law you are able to understand what is what and who is who with that i will start my presentation i will try to make it short probably for a half an hour or 40 minutes and i will keep the floor open for any questions from your side not limited to maritime the, the presentation that i am taking but also any questions on your career your interest in maritime law because i'm sure that that is something everyone would be looking for answers to so without much of a delay let me try to uh, is my slide visible to each one of you Yes, sir. We can. Yes, yes. sir. It is. Yes. Thank you. So, like I said, I am not trying. My endeavor is not to explain to you the 
Indian carriage of goods by sea act. But my endeavor is only to make you understand the basic terminologies of maritime law for which I am relying on the Indian carriage of goods by sea act. Now to go to start with maritime law, I should tell you that maritime industry or the trade through sea has been the oldest trade that has that that has prevailed not only in India but throughout the world because all initial trades which actually broke the boundaries were through ships and through the ocean. Now if you look at India it is no different. India also has a very old maritime law culture or rather maritime culture. Now the initial trace of the maritime trading was is actually traced in third uh, 3 million BC where it is clear there is clear evidence that in the Indus Valley inhibitants there was a practice of maritime trade happening. You could actually go, uh, go through the history of maritime law, which I'm not trying to explain here, but all throughout BCs, ADs, and even if there is a era beyond AD, I'm sure that the maritime industry will surely exist because it is said that the moment maritime trade or the maritime industry fails, that would be the end of the world. I had the opportunity. I was actually reading a book on book uh, called Ivory Thrones, which is written by Mr. Manu Pillai. I'm sure that many of you here would have written any, anyone who is interested in, in uh, history would have read that book. You should actually read the book and understand how a trade exploration. of good hope uh, is my slide still viewable uh, no sir we it's not a civil right oh uh, yes sir we is it now no sir uh in between it did come up but now it's not visible yes sir now it's visible is it is it you now, now yes. uh, a trade through uh, which was led by Vasco da Gama through the Cape of Good Hope actually changed not only the culture of Kerala, but actually the entire trade as we know today in India. So you could actually lay down in 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 history the the way in which the maritime trade started happening in the 1947. Thereafter, how the Dutch uh, came here to fight the Portuguese along with the Samodhi in 1958 and later actually flourished the maritime trade in India. Hello. Yes, sir, we can hear you. I think I'm having some net issues. Is the uh, is the uh, uh, presentation viewable? No, sir. Now it's not. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Okay, now even in 1947, when we actually got independence, the India was at that point of time having 33 ships on their own with 538 officers for securing 
one of the largest coastal line in the world which is spread over 400 4660 miles and india is a country which has a lot of islands behind some of the asian countries now you could actually see that government has invested quite a lot in the maritime industry because the all government realized that it is necessary to have a maritime trade a maritime industry set up so that the economy flourish from time to time now as of today 80 percentage of the world trade is happening through maritime and out of the 80 percentage 21st 24 percentage of the trade is happening through indian ships and the crew members who actually man the ship is mostly indians and philippine uh, people from philippines now we have a lot of acts today prevailing for uh, maritime law uh, which i'm not coming into if i am given another opportunity i'll definitely will be talking to you on each of the laws which is prevailing in india now i would like to tell you to start with the maritime trade is always happening through a ship now ship is what as it looks in this picture okay but as per maritime law a ship or a vessel is not limited to a ship now it includes any ship as you could actually see in this picture then it includes a boat so only requirement is it should be a motorized boat it should also include a sailing vessel which we actually also term it as a cruise vessel then it also include a barge now if you look at a barge barge is a floating vessel but it is it can be either propelled or non propelled so you have propelled barge which actually could be uh, uh, propelled by itself or otherwise it is normally pulled by a tug so if you look at the picture of the barge there is a barge and on top of it it is a tug now the next picture is of a tug tug is a small self propelled vessel it is used mostly for pulling a vessel so when it when i say a vessel it is used for pulling a barge it is also used for pulling a vessel now you will be surprised why a vessel should be pulled or a ship should be pulled now uh, if i don't know how many of you have actually came to ernagulam and uh, sat in the marine drive there so facing the marine drive you actually have the cochin fortress and if some of you might have had the opportunity to watch the ships being berthed to a wharf now uh, the particularity of a ship is that it cannot be turned in 90 degree angle like a car or a scooter so to normally if there is no not much width to a port the tugs are used to push the ship towards a wharf so that is why a tug, tug comes into place now sir, uh, sorry to interrupt sir uh, the slides are not changing we are still in the first slide oh i'm sorry Is it uh, viewable now? Yes, sir, it's viewable, but we are still in the first slide history of maritime law in India. It's not changing.
in fact i'm not very familiar with this interface ah uh, yes sir give me a moment let me try to rectify it because i sure. some pictures which would actually make it uh, understandable for you people so. sure sir Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Is my slide changing? Can you just tell me? Uh, no, it's not changing, sir. Now, um, yes, now it's changing. Okay. Okay. So the first first picture is that of a, a ship, as you could actually see. Now the second is a boat. Like uh, like I said, it uh, to become a vessel, it should be a motorized boat. Now. the third one is a sailing vessel what what we actually could see uh, as we see cruise or a, a, a vessel which actually carry uh, people and the third one a uh, fourth one is a barge now barge is a floating like i was telling it's a floating uh, vessel but and it can be either propelled or non propelled and on top of the barge what you see is a tug now tug is a small vessel a small vessel which is normally used for uh, pulling the vessel or for doing small small repairing works on the vessel and other things now a vessel also include a floating vessel now if you could see a floating is uh, is the slide changing shilpa now ah uh, yes sir it's changing now uh, as you could see a floating vessel now a floating vessel is something any anything that could actually float on water and could be used for any purpose now in this picture what you see is a floating vessel which is used for dredging dredging is the purpose where actually you remove sand to make enough depth so that a port can be created or a vessel can arrive to the port it also includes a hovercraft a vessel also include a hovercraft hovercraft is a new technology or a new way in which the vessel could actually propel in water in fact it actually people say hovercraft actually flies in water now it also include a offshore industry mobile unit now people might think how can a industry a uh, oil uh, offshore industry as seen in this picture could be termed as a vessel now if you look at the uh, picture it is not a permanent structure but it is a structure which is actually could be taken from from one place to another for oil exploration so as per maritime law this is also considered to be a vessel now a vessel is also a vessel which is actually sunk there are times when actually vessel uh, lose its stability and uh, is sunk in water or it is abandoned by the owners because because it is difficult to maintain a vessel so those kind of uh, abandoned or uh, sunk vessel is also considered to be a vessel under the maritime law now coming to carriage of goods by sea now as the word specify it is carriage of goods by sea so basically goods are being transported from one place to another through a medium which is the sea that is what carriage of goods by sea implies now if you look at the picture you have a port of loading let's say i am a person who have lot of uh, steel who are a manufacturer of a steel in a in australia now i have a buyer in india now what i would do i want to sell the steel from australia to india the best way or the only way to do that is to transport is through a vessel so i would be transporting the goods from australia which is the port of loading through a ship 
either in a container or in some other way to a port of discharge which is india so the process of carriage from one place to another is called the carriage of goods and when it happens by sea it is called the carriage of goods by sea now i would like to introduce you to certain terminologies which are used in the carriage of goods by sea the first of it is a carrier okay now carrier is also known as a ship owner so someone anyone who owns a ship now like you like the word says carrier the only duty of the carrier is to carry the goods from one place to another so in now why would they carry they would carry it for a price what we actually term it as freight f r e i g h t freight in maritime trade okay so any person who carries a goods from one place to another in a ship is called a carrier or a ship owner now you could see the emblem of cma cgm in the vessel uh in the picture uh, in the picture that i've shown so cma cgm is one of the biggest carrier or the second biggest carrier in the world now you also have the or uh, first five major players who actually carry or, or the ship owners in the world one is evergreen the picture that i've seen uh, shown is that of the evergreen vessel that got stuck in panama and which was all over news so evergreen is one of the biggest uh, or one of the biggest uh, ship owner in the world and you have the mersk line mersk line is the biggest undoubtedly the biggest carrier and they might be having a fleet fleet man uh, means ship they might be having a fleet which may vary from 500 to 600 uh, as of today then you have hapak lloyd which is again one of the biggest uh, carrier in the world and one of the most trusted brands in the uh, in the maritime industry is msc uh, shipping so i'm not saying that these are the only carriers in the world but normal these are the leading carriers in the world if you actually look for carriers the name carriers in uh, in uh, google you might actually come across numerous carriers uh, the so you have actual ship owners you have nbocs so those terms i'm not coming into because it might be a little confusing for you so i hope you are clear on who who a carrier is and who a ship owner is now the terminology the second terminology is shipper now as the word says a shipper is someone who actually owns the cargo and who is willing to ship the cargo so like i said in the example earlier i am a manufacturer of steel in australia and i want to send the steel from australia to india in that circumstance i am called the shipper because i am the person who is sending the cargo from one place to another the second third person the third important person in the carriage of goods is the consignee now consignee as the word is itself signifies he is the receiver of goods so let us imagine in the normal world where you actually courier a letter the person who sends the courier in maritime world is called the shipper the courier service is called the carrier in maritime world is called the carrier and the person who receives the letter is called the consignee it's as simple so for a carriage to take place it is necessary that we have these three main players these are the players that actually uh, come into the forefront now along with this you actually you, i am just introducing to you a few terms like the shipping liner agent now each ship has to come to each port for example the ship i'm taking the example that i quoted earlier itself i'm shipping a uh, steel from australia to india to ship the steel the ship has to come to the port in australia now each port will be having 
different different procedures the australian port will be having different procedures which is mandated as per the australian law the indian port will be having different procedures as mandated under the uh, indian law so it is difficult for a single person to manage all of it so each carrier appoints their own agent in each port so cma will be having one shipping line agent in australia then cma will be having one shipping agent in india so this the agent who is acting the person who is acting on behalf of the carrier is called a shipping agent now the another person is a freight forwarder now i told you about the procedure like there is a shipper there is a consignee there is a carrier now it is not necessary that the shipper will be aware of the prices which is quoted by each one of the carrier because there are different carriers which will be quoting different freight aar ana etom koodal cash etom nalla price kodukunnathu ennallathu there should be a specialized agent who should know about all of it and that is where the freight forwarder comes to the picture now freight forwarder is the person or let's say that he is a broker let's put it him as a broker he is a broker who identifies for the shipper or the consignee which is the best liner or a best carrier which provides the best freight and arrange the uh, uh, container or uh, carriage on behalf of the shipper that person is called a freight forwarder and finally i i think i not given the slide of a cha you also have someone called a customs house agent now customs house agent is the person who actually do the customs formalities on behalf of the shipper or the shipping line or the consignee in their respective ports so you have the so these are the six main players as far as uh the carriage of goods by seas uh con- or uh, maritime trade is concerned so you have the carrier you have the shipper you have the consignee you have the shipping agent you have the freight forwarder and you also have the customs house agent so these are the main players in uh, maritime trade now how does the trade happen okay now yan uru cargo netha parna steel i hand it over to the carrier what is the assurance that the steel that i have handed over in australia would be delivered in india promptly that is the question idina overcome cheyuna karyam aanu what we say as a bill of lading okay now bill of lading is the document of receipt or a document to evidence the title of the cargo now i will put it how it Uh, how bill of lading bill of lading in the working is quite uh, unique now nam yan nertha parna example edukam you uh, send a courier you send a courier you are given a receipt a courier receipt ee sadhanam aichu ennu ariyan vendi similarly when you entrust the cargo to a carrier the carrier issues a bill of lading now bill of lading is normally issued in triplicate there would be three copies of the bill of lading now out of which one copy would be retained by the carrier idu kodukuna aalude eduthu oru copy undavu the one copy would be with the shipper and the third copy will be with the consignee so moonu vera eduthu oru copy undu so for shipper it is a receipt of goods and for the consignee it is a document of title abo ee moonu vera eduthu undu now when the shipper hands over the goods in to a ship the ship issues the bill of lading to the shipper to uh, bill of lading shipper idinte oru copy consignee ki kodukum now the goods in the nan australia il ninnu if i load steel uh, steel in a ship it would take a minimum of 20 to 30 days for the cargo to reach in india now by the time ee 20 days in the end when the cargo reaches india someone has to take delivery now how would the carrier know that this is the same consignee so the third copy will be with the consignee 
the consignee comes with the deliver uh, the the uh, third copy to the carrier and surrenders the original of the bill of loading to the carrier a uh, consignee da kai irikkana copy carrier inde kai lekku kodukum carrier would verify whether it is the same uh, bill of loading that is being uh, issued by the uh, uh, carrier same bill of loading aanu nu manasilaakki kanya the carrier would issue a delivery order and the consignee can take delivery of the uh, goods so moonu copy kodukunna edinana oranam shipper for receipt and second for consignee to present the bill of loading at the time of taking delivery of the cargo now if bill of loading ile it should actually have the following information one name of the shipping company who issues the bill of loading for example cma kodukuna nerthu kaanicha cma gaana kodukuna bill of loading anangi it should have the bill of loading of cma cgm if it's evergreen it should have the name of evergreen now it should ha, no uh, show the vessel vessel or the flag in which the cargo is being carried ed kappal laana edu kondu povunnathu then it should have the shipper's name then it should have the consignee's name the order or notifying party ennalla the consignee's name and then it should have a description of goods in the sadhana mani but steel anengil it should also state what is the description of goods and then it should also mention the weight itrayum sadhanangalana or a bill of lading il vendathu now this is a typical bill of lading that is issued uh in uh, uh, in the maritime trade now if you actually could see uh, are you able to see the slide yes sir we are we can see yeah so so if you look at the slide the the name of the carrier on top it has a name of the carrier so the bill of lading would have a left ahead kind of thing which is idinagathulladhu it is lloyd trustino which is one of the carriers in the world now uh, it will have the name of the carrier on top of it as a letter head madri then it will have the second one in orange color it will have a bill of lading number the orange color ne randam the original nalla idil kaanunathu that is what is called a bill of lading number now the second column uh, e blue will have first column it has the shipper information the person who is sending cargo in the information it would be there thereafter it has the consignee information like r kaano id deliver cheyanda it will have the consignee information and in the end it will have the notifying party information okay now adinda adilekku nokki kanyanya if you could look at it it has a purple color purple color nu kandrale that is the name of the vessel e goods ed cargo il aano kondu pogunathu adinde details ed ed kappal il aano kondu pogunathu aa kappal la peru the name of the vessel would be stated here and in the green if you look at look at it it will show the port of it will show the port of loading it will show the port of loading evada ninnana ee cargo kayti irikkunathu and in the bottom of it it will show the port of delivery ed sthalathe kaano idu deliver cheyyanadu ipo idinte agathu nokkiyanengi in the green this thing you can actually see it is issued from china and it is being delivered to manchester so now coming to the yellow if you look at the yellow adu a container if the cargo is being issued in a container in a container it will have the container number and the container seal okay and then towards towards the middle towards the middle it will have the cargo description end cargo on id ennu in this case it is reflectors that is being carried uh, like reflectors for lightning equipments adana idile carry ennu if it is steel it will say steel if it is coal it will say coal or if it is any other thing what is the cargo that is being carried that would be stated here and towards the extreme right it shows the kg or the volume of cargo that is being sent to it now there is one more thing that you will now ivada a to adilekku varigiyanengi you could actually see in blue 
it is written three, which actually says that there are three bill of ladings that is being issued. And if it are ready very yanagi, it says either the inana cargo put to dig another it's a FCL or LCL. FCL and down the low, LCL and down the low, then I'll come in the next slide so that you will be understanding. And towards the right bottom, there is a signature. So the signature would be actually made by the steamer agent on behalf of the carrier. So this is basically how a bill of lading looks. And these are the content of a bill of lading. So it, it should, it will have the name of the carrier. It will have the shipper information. It will have the consignee information. It will have the information of the vessel in which it is carried. It will show the place of loading. It will show the place of discharge. It will show the container and the seal number. It will no show the cargo what is carried in it and the volume of cargo. And it will also show the how it is carried, FCL or LCL or and who issued it. But this is typically a bill of lading. Now, every bill of lading will be is a contract in itself. It is a contract in itself. It is a contract between Nertha Parna Munuere. Rather, it is a contract between the carrier, shipper, and the consignee. Now, contract in the terms and conditions would be always written in the back of the bill of lading. Uh, it, I'm sure that it is not readable because it is always in very small letters. But if you actually, we all take a lens and read for the clauses of the bill of lading but it will have everything what is stated between or it would lay down all the terms and conditions between the shipper carrier and the consignee in a bill of lading it will most importantly as lawyers we will all look into the jurisdiction laws every day on a dispute uh, determine general jurisdiction every day on we look into it so Every bill of lading, the reverse side of a bill of lading will have our terms and conditions of the bill of lading. Okay, now, uh, coming to, though not very related to carriage of goods by Sea Act, I'm just trying to make you understand that for a vessel to birth, vessel in e cargo load in a mingle, it should have a wharf, it should have a port. So in India or throughout the world, it is it is recognized that there will be a major port and there will be non-major port. Okay. Now in India at present, we have 13 major port. In Kerala, we only have one major port, which is the Cochin Portress. Now uh, the other 13 major ports includes the Kanla port, the Gujarat Pipawa port in India, then the Mumbai Portress, then the Jawaharlal Nehru Portress, then uh, the Govan uh, uh, Portress, then you have the Mangalore, New Mangalore Portress, then Vishagapatnam Portress, Chennai Portress, Tutikurin Portress, Kolkata Portress, um, Hadia Portress and the Paradi Portress. So these are the 13 major Portress that we have in India. Now, uh, see major Portress has their own functioning it, it it has a board of trust which actually manages the functioning of the major port trust check. now other than the major port trust check, if you look at each state each state will be having small small non-major port but earlier we used to call it a minor port so each minor port is falls within the uh within the each state's maritime board uh preview and the maritime, the maritime board of each state determines regarding the functioning of the minor ports. Now, you all would have known by now that senior advocate is presently the chairman of the Kerala Maritime Board, which means that he is the person who determines with regard to the functioning of more than 200 non-major ports in Kerala. So each state will be having such non-major ports and that will be controlled and maintained by the uh, the maritime board of each state. Now coming to it a little uh, deviation from uh, carriage of goods by sea act. So each vessel should have a wharf 
ഈ പോർട്ടിൽ ഉണ്ടാകുന്ന സാധനം എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ വാഫ് വാഫ് ഇസ് സംതിങ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് റിക്വയർഡ് ഫോർ ബർത്തിങ് ഓഫ് എ വെസൽ ഈ വാർഫിൽ ആണ് വി ആക്ച്വലി ലോഡ് ദി കാർഗോ വി ഡിസ്ചാർജ് ദ കാർഗോ ആൻഡ് ഓൾ ദോസ് ഫങ്ഷനിങ് വിൽ ബി ഹാപ്പനിങ് ഇൻ എ വാഫ് ആൻഡ് ഇൻ ദ വാഫ് ഇപ്പോ ചില വാഫിന് ദേ വിൽ നോട്ട് ബി സഫിഷ്യന്റ് ഡെപ് സോ വാട്ട് ദേ ഡൂ ഇസ് ദേ ക്രിയേറ്റ് എ കീ കീ ഇസ് എ എക്സ്റ്റെൻഷൻ ടു വേർഡ്സ് വാട്ടർ വിച്ച് ഇസ് കോൾഡ് എ കീ ആൻഡ് ഈ സെക്കൻഡ് ഇത് കാണുന്നത് സോ ഇറ്റ്സ് എൻ എക്സ്റ്റെൻഷൻ ടു വേർഡ്സ് വാട്ടർ സോ ഇൻ ദ കീ ഓൾസോ ദ വെസൽസ് ക്യാൻ ബർത്ത് ആൻഡ് ഡൂ ദി കാർഗോ ഓപ്പറേഷൻസ് now how is the cargo ipo uh, cargo ennu parayumbo it contains everything under the sun nammal innu kaanuna allengi nammal upayogikkuna computers chairs whatever it is these are all cargoes these are moved from one place to another in three methods so today we call it the world of containerization ningal ellavarum kandittundavum containers so containers are being used for stuffing the cargo the containers are normally 20 adi we call it 20 foot containers and 40 foot containers aba neelo neelo video anusarichana 20 foot and 40 foot aayittu kanakkakunnu so a typical container has is uh, has four uh, 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 the, uh, it is fully covered a typical container is fully covered and inside that you actually stuff the cargo in various methods adu chalappa pallets side aayirikkum chalappa cover cheyidatt aayirikkum chalappa cargo verde adinte adhekku load cheyyuvana and it is shut and then it is sealed so what you first see is a standard container nammal ella orthum kandu kondirikkana containers undallo allengi namakku evadeyum kaanan pattuna container aanu standard container nallu now a high cube container is a longer container of a 20 foot container hard top container is similar to a standard container now you have the open top container open top container normally use idinda mole mugalil mugalil open a irikkum a blue color nallad ad open aayittulladana it can be detached so what is what this is used is machines machineries aga crane le mugalilekku eduthu vekkan vendi crane il crane il idu pokkite it is actually kept through the top adu kondana open top containers varunnu then you have the flat tracks flat tracks are normally used for contain uh, for transporting uh, cars and other things carugal idinte edayilekku vechittu so it is loaded into a container or a ship uh, so that is how flat tracks are there then platforms are there platforms nu ornu yenna it is normally chala uh, machineries undu which might be really huge അതുപോലുള്ള അങ്ങനെ ഈ കണ്ടെയ്നറിൽ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ട്വന്റി ഫുട്ട് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഫോർട്ടി ഫുട്ട് ഫുട്ടിന്റെ അകത്ത് വെക്കാൻ പറ്റാത്ത മെഷീനറീസ് ഉണ്ടാവും ദാറ്റ് ആർ ആക്ച്വലി കെപ്റ്റിൻ സച്ച് പ്ലാറ്റ്ഫോംസ് ആൻഡ് ലോഡ് ഇൻ ടു ദിൻ ടു ദ വെസൽ നൗ യു ഹാവ് വെന്റിലേറ്റഡ് കണ്ടെയ്നേഴ്സ് വെന്റിലേറ്റഡ് കണ്ടെയ്നേഴ്സ് ആർ നോർമലി യൂസ് ഫോർ ട്രാൻസ്പോർട്ടേഷൻ ഓർ ഷിപ്മെന്റ് ഓഫ് സെർട്ടൺ കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് കാർഗോ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ കോഫി കോഫി മറ്റേ വെന്റിലേഷൻ ഇല്ലാത്ത കണ്ടെയ്നറിൽ ട്രാൻസ്പോർട്ട് ചെയ്യുകയാണെങ്കിൽ അത് നശിച്ചു പോകും ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ് നീഡ്സ് അതിൻ്റെ അകത്ത് നിന്ന് ഈർപ്പം വന്നിട്ട് ഇറ്റ് ദ ക്വാളിറ്റി ഓഫ് കോഫി ഗെറ്റ്സ് ഡിറ്റീരിയോറേറ്റഡ് സോ യു ഹാവ് സംതിങ് കോൾ വെന്റിലേറ്റഡ് കണ്ടെയ്നർ അതിൻ്റെ അകത്ത് കുറെ ഹോൾസ് ഉണ്ടാവും ഓർ ദ വിൽ ബി പ്രൊവിഷൻ ഫോർ വെന്റിലേഷൻ ആൻഡ് ദ ഫൈനൽ വൺ ദാറ്റ് യു ആക്ച്വലി സി ഈസ് എ റെഫ്രിജറേറ്റഡ് കണ്ടെയ്നേഴ്സ് സോ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ഹാവ് ടെമ്പറേച്ചർ സെറ്റിംഗ്സ് so there might be lot of cargoes for example fish fish is the most common cargo alengi meat products idakka one place il ninnu naan nertha parna nai from australia to india transport cheyanamengi it takes more than 20 to 30 days uh, to for the product to reach from australia ee 20 divasam ee meat alengi fish inda quality adhe maadhiri nikkanam engil it has to be uh, used uh, you know transported in a refrigerated country container or what we call reefer containers so they will set the uh, temperature probably minus 2 minus 4 minus 18 anganeulla idile vechittu it is translated so this is how containerization is done so other than containerization you have the bulk cargo bulk cargo nu ornu yenna for example coal allengi cement cement ulla karyangal you don't use it in a uh, you know container you don't stuff it in a container because it's not practically practical to put it inside inside a container so you what you do is you carry it as bulk so 
what what you see is this is a vessel the first picture is that of a vessel where the cargo is being stored in sacks but the chakkal lakite adu adinte theke store cheyyo so it will have a big hull madriyulla sadhanam torana bhagam irikkum adeyke ingana cargo vechitte it would be closed and the second picture is that of a bulk carrier now idinte adu kore aragalu kaanu onnu rendu moonu naalu anju aaru eedu aragalu kaanunnundu now each ara each ara is called a pondu okay it is called a pondu ee ara thoranatte ee arayilekku endu cargo aano aa cargo adinte agathekku stuff cheyyum and the ara will be closed so the pondu will be closed so this is how a bulk cargo is being transported from one place to another place now you have liquid cargo ipo petrol uh, lng polla karyangal kondovanengil you have vessels which is specifically designed for carriage of such cargo so in the first picture which actually you could see a <coughs> liquid ta- uh, tanker so idinte agatha aragal aanu you will have lot of uh are uh, separated uh, portions of uh, uh what do you call aragal in which you you could actually store car uh, liquid cargo and the second one is actually a tank in a vessel you have tanks and in which the liquid cargo is being transported from one place to another ini njan nerthe parna madiri there is a concept which is very relevant in carriage of goods by sea c uh, uh, act which is which we call fcl or is a full container lot or lcl which is called less than container lot okay now this concept is very important but i'll tell you what the concept is now full container lot enu parney kenya or container la full enda sadhanam mathram narakkana narakkiyanengil that is called the fund full container lot adhaidhu or container 20 foot container eduthu alleng 40 foot container eduthu adinte agathe stuff cheyyuna sadhanam it belongs to all only one person it is normally called a full container lot as the name specify the full container is loaded with a single person's cargo avadeyana so ivada relevance varunadu nanu 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 when if it's a fcl normally carry, carry, carrier endha cheyyunadu nanu nanu avare container vittu kodukku now the container is taken into the factory of the carrier where he stuff the cargo aa idu mottham container mottham he stuff his cargo close the uh, container seal it and hand it over to the carrier for carriage from one place to another aba avada sambhavikunnathu there is no responsibility for the carrier in the event of a full container lot whereas in a less than container lot ipo enikku korchu cargo ullu enikku oru 10 packet oru portal nannu mattoru packet like kondu varum for which i don't require a full container so what what i do is i book slots ipo indha agathu oru aragal aayittu kaanunnathu nanu ഇതാണ് സ്ലോട്ട്സ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഐ ബുക്ക് സ്ലോട്ട്സ് ഇൻ എ കണ്ടെയ്നർ ഇത്ര സ്ലോട്ട്സ് വേണമെന്ന് പറയും സോ ഐ ഹാൻഡ് ഓവർ ദി കാർഗോ ടു ടു ദ ഐ ഹാൻഡ് ഓവർ ദി കാർഗോ ടു ദി കാരിയർ ആൻഡ് കാരിയർ സ്റ്റഫ് ദി കാർഗോ ഇൻസൈഡ് ദി കണ്ടെയ്നർ ഇൻ ദ ഇവന്റ് ഓഫ് എ ലെസ് കണ്ടെയ്നർ ലോഡ് ദർ ഇസ് മോർ റെസ്പോൺസിബിലിറ്റി ഓർ മോർ റെസ്പോൺസിബിലിറ്റി ഓൺ ദി ഹെഡ് ഓർ ദി ഓൺ ദി കാരിയർ so this is the concept of a full container lot and the uh, less than container lot ee uh, picture representation koduthirikkunnu endha nu ornayya for example or container na if you could see ella motta color il thaniyana koduthirikkunnu it shows that it belongs to a single person less than container lot you could see that there are different different colors each color belongs to dif- a different different person അപ്പൊ ഇതിന്റെ അകത്ത് നാല് കൺസൈനി ഉണ്ടാവും ഈ ലെസ് ദാൻ കണ്ടെയ്നർ ലോൺ ആർ ഫോർ കൺസൈനീസ് വെറസ് ഇൻ ദി ഫുൾ കണ്ടെയ്നർ ലോൺ വൺ കൺസൈനി ഓക്കെ നൗസ് ഓൾസോ ദി കൺസെപ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ചാട്ട പാർട്ടി ചാട്ട പാർട്ടി എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ കൺസെപ്റ്റ് വെയർ ഇൻ അ വെസൽ ഇസ് ബീങ് ഹയർഡ് എൻറ്റയർലി ബൈ എ ഷിപ്പർ ഓർ ബൈ എ കൺസൈനി ഇപ്പൊ നേരത്തെ കണ്ടത് ഒരു 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 പ്രത്യേക കാര്യത്തിന് വേണ്ടി അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു പ്രത്യേക സാധനം കൊടുക്കാൻ വേണ്ടി നമ്മൾ വെസൽ വെസൽ ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്നു നൗ ചാട്ട പാർട്ടി ട്രാൻസ്പോർട്ടേഷൻ ഇസ് മോസ്റ്റ്ലി വേ ബൈ 
a ship is hired by another person for a particular use let's understand that ipo nammal normal idu nokkiyanengil if now you have a rent a car concept someone has a car you go to him and you rent the car and use use it for your purpose it is the same concept on charter party someone has a vessel you rent the vessel for a particular purpose now charter party is three types the first charter party is called a voyage charter party voyage charter party is a destination oriented charter party ipo nerthu parna adhe parna example edukkuyanengil you have i have steel for transportation from australia to india so i the entire cargo enki atrayum steel undu that i need a entire vessel for transportation so i enter into a charter party agreement with the ship owner and i charter the vessel which means that the entire vessel runs for me from australia to india so i can schedule my plan i can use the uh, kind of navigation as i like ee voyage charter party il otta difference endu nu ordeyna the master indha athulla master and the crew will be appointed by the owner will be appointed by the owner actual owner aayirikkum indha athu for example nammal normally idin ഡ്രൈവർ നിങ്ങൾ ഓടിക്കുന്നതിനോട് ഓണറിന് വിശ്വാസമില്ല സോ അതുകൊണ്ട് ഡ്രൈവർ തരുന്നു എന്നുള്ള മാതിരി ഇൻ വോയേജ് ആട്ട പാർട്ടി ദി മാസ്റ്റർ ആൻഡ് ദി ക്രൂ വിൽ ബി സപ്ലൈഡ് ബൈ ദി ഓണർ നൗ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ലിമിറ്റഡ് ആസ് ദി ടേം ടെർമിനോളജി സേസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് വോയേജ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഫോർ ഫോർ വൺ ഫ്രം ഫോർ എ മൂവ്മെന്റ് ഓഫ് കാർഗോ ഫ്രം വൺ പ്ലേസ് ടു അനദർ പ്ലേസ് ഫോർ എ ടിപ്പിക്കൽ വോയേജ് നൗ സെക്കൻഡ് തിങ് ഇസ് എ ടൈം ചാട്ട പാർട്ടി ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഫോർ എ പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ പീരിയഡ് ഞാൻ നേരത്തെ പറഞ്ഞാൽ മതി ഒരു കാറ് ആറുമാസത്തേക്ക് എടുക്കുന്നു ആ ആറുമാസ കാലം എനിക്ക് എനിക്ക് ഇഷ്ടമുള്ള മാതിരി ഓടിക്കാം എന്റെ ആ കാറായിട്ട് ഓടിക്കാം അതേമാതിരി ഐ എം ഹയറിങ് എ വെസൽ ഫോർ എ പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ പീരിയഡ് ഫോർ എ പീരിയഡ് ഓഫ് ത്രീ മന്ത്സ് ഓർ എ സിക്സ് മന്ത്സ് ഐ എം ഇഫ് ഐ എം ഹയറിങ് ഇറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് കോൾഡ് എ ടൈം ചാട്ട പാർട്ടി എഗെയിൻ ഇൻ എ ടൈം ചാട്ട പാർട്ടി ദി മാസ്റ്റർ ആൻഡ് ദി ക്രൂ ആർ സപ്ലൈ ബൈ ദി ഓണർ and in the final type of charter party is called a demise uh, or a bareboat charter party bareboat charter party is you actually take the vessel you take the vessel in this case the master the crew and the entire control of the uh, vessel is by the charter aarano ee vessel edukkunnathu owner nu oru tharathilla responsibility illa the vessel is given to you on a higher basis നിങ്ങൾക്ക് വെസൽ തരുന്നു ഹൗ യു റൺ ഇറ്റ് വാട്ട് യു റൺ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഓൾ ഓൺ യു ആൻഡ് ദി ഓണർ ഹാസ് നോ റെസ്പോൺസിബിലിറ്റി സോ ദീസ് ആർ ദി ത്രീ ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് ചാർട്ട പാർട്ടി ദാറ്റ് യു കുഡ് ആക്ച്വലി സി നൗ സി ഈ ക്യാരേജ് ഓഫ് ഗുഡ്സ് ബൈ സി അല്ലെങ്കിൽ എന്തിനാണ് ക്യാരേജ് ഓഫ് ഗുഡ്സ് ബൈ സി ആക്ട് വന്നതെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ബിക്കോസ് ഓവർ എ പീരിയഡ് വെൻ ദർ വാസ് transportation of cargo from one place to another there used to be a lot of damages which started occurring over pakshe cargo proper aayitt or sthalath nu gate mattoru sthalath ettilla midway fire vannu allengi damage vannu so it was very necessary for the world international community to bring out the liability and the responsibility of each of these people adayade shipper carrier and consigning what is their responsibility and the lay down cheyanayittulla or necessity vannu the first attempt was made it in the in 1924 which is known as the hague rules now hague rules is also known as the international convention for the unification of certain rules and laws relating to the bill of lading and protocol of signature and hague rules was a remarkable stepping stone in the maritime trade because it actually lay down the liability and responsibility of each of the parties subsequently there were different uh, modification which was required and subsequently the hague rules was replaced by the hague wispy rules and in 78 it was again 
a new set of rules came in which is known as the hamburg rules and presently we are standing in rotterdam rules uh, the indian carriage of goods by sea act is mostly based on the hague which be rules the amendments which are made in the uh, hamburg rules and the rotterdam or rotterdam rules are not being fully incorporated into the indian carriage of goods by sea act the indian carriage of goods by sea act has lot of provisions uh, it needs to be taken on its own on the rights liabilities and responsibilities of the other thing but i will try to give a small narration on what are the duties of a carrier e ship kodukuna aalkalda duties endakeyanu nallana there is only there are primarily three duties for the carrier i like eight two million duty endu nornaina it should be a sea worthy vessel now sea is one place where you could actually see there are lot of pearls which are lying ഇന്ന് കാണുന്ന സി എൽ ഇന്ന് ശാന്തമായിരിക്കുന്ന സി എൽ ആ നാളെ എഴുതുന്നത് ദർ മൈറ്റ് കൊടുങ്കാറ്റുകൾ ഉണ്ടാവാം ദർ മൈറ്റ് ബി ഹൈറ്റൈഡ് ലോ ടൈഡ് സ്റ്റോംസ് ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് തിങ്സ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ വെരി അൺപ്രഡിക്റ്റബിൾ തിങ് സോ എ ഷിപ്പ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ബീങ് പ്രൊവൈഡഡ് ഷുഡ് ബി കേപ്പബിൾ ടു സെയിൽ ത്രൂ ദ സി ആൻഡ് റീച്ച് ദി പോർട്ട് ഓഫ് ഡെസ്റ്റിനേഷൻ സോ സി വേർത്തി ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ഷിപ്പ് ആയിരിക്കണം Uh, carriage of goods in vendi kodukkandathu and second thing is it should be properly manned krithyamayittu navigation ariyavunna or master undavanam adinu venda chief engineer undavanam and there there it should be properly manned depending on the size the uh, the type of vessel the international community actually says how much of crews are required in each vessel for safe man, safe manning and necessary supply adey krithyamayittu bunker bunker nu ornayna nammude ivide indaram krithyamayittulla bunker should be there in each of the vessels and then it it should be properly stacked adey ipo containers nammal kandu ee containers has different each container will be having different weight so there is something called a loading plant ee ship is sailing through a sea and it requires proper stability apo krithyamayittu balance cheyina reethiyil ee containers stack cheyidal maatrame the ship can properly sail through the water so it should be properly stacked and loaded and handled with care so idellamana primary liabilities of uh, primary duties of a carrier now i am coming uh, almost 45 hours uh, minutes i so i'm coming to the end of it now the difference uh, if you look at it carriage of goods by sea act uh, from the normal laws with regard to the limitation sadharana oru money suit allengi oru oru suit for damage against uh, any person as per the limitation act you have 3 years period 3 years in only you, uh, you uh, case would done only but as far as any damage or loss that has occurred through a uh, shipment that is coming falls within the ambit of the indian carriage of goods by sea act the suit or the claim has to be initiated within a period of 1 year which is a substantial difference from the municipal law which is the limitation act okay now yan nerthana it is this is the end of uh, my uh, session where you could see എങ്ങനെയാണ് ഡാമേജസ് വരുന്നത് എന്നുള്ളത് പലർക്കും ഒരു ചോദ്യം ഉണ്ടാവാം സി ഒരു ഡാമേജ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ കാർഗോ ലോഡ് ചെയ്യാൻ നേർത്ത് ദ കണ്ടെയ്നേഴ്സ് ദ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ബൗണ്ട് ദർ ആർ ചാൻസസ് ദാറ്റ് ദി കണ്ടെയ്നേഴ്സ് മൈ ഫോൾ അങ്ങനെ വീഴുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ദർ മൈറ്റ് ബി ഡാമേജ് ടു ദ കണ്ടെയ്നർ വിച്ച് വിൽ ഇൻറ്റേൺ വിൽ കോസ് ഡാമേജ് ടു ദ കാർഗോ വിച്ച് ഇസ് സ്റ്റാക്ട് ഇൻസൈഡ് ദി കണ്ടെയ്നർ ദ സെക്കൻഡ് തിങ് ഇസ് ഇൻ പ്രോപ്പർ സ്റ്റാക്കിങ് ഞാൻ നേരത്തെ പറഞ്ഞാൽ മതി ഇതിന്റെ അകത്ത് വെയിറ്റ് പലതിനും പല പല വെയിറ്റ് ആണ് ഇതിന്റെ അകത്തുള്ള കണ്ടെയ്നേഴ്സ് സോ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് നെസസറി ദാറ്റ് ഈച്ച് ഓഫ് ദി കണ്ടെയ്നേഴ്സ് ആർ സ്റ്റാക്ട് ഇൻ സച്ച് എ വേ ദാറ്റ് ദർ ഇസ് സ്റ്റെബിലിറ്റി ബോത്ത് ടു ദ കണ്ടെയ്നേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് ടു ദ വെസൽ ഇഫ് ദർ ഇസ് ഇൻ പ്രോപ്പർ സ്റ്റാക്കിങ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ബൗണ്ട് ദാറ്റ് ദി കണ്ടെയ്നേഴ്സ് ആർ ബൗണ്ട് ടു ഫോൾ ഡൗൺ ആൻഡ് കോസ് ഡാമേജ് ടു ദ കാഗോ അടുത്തത് വൺ ഓഫ് ദ ചാൻസസ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് ദർ ഇസ് ഫയർ ഇൻ ദി വെസൽ and it is a very common uh, way in which that damage could cause to cargo 
in case of fire we have a concept called general average that is being declared which is again a subject to be taught on another day now there is also a loss of stability nan nertha parna madri the ship is a marvelous design adu engana വെള്ളത്തിലൂടെ പോകുന്നു എന്നുള്ളത് വളരെ സയന്റിഫിക് ആയിട്ട് പഠിച്ചു ചെയ്യുന്ന ഇതാണ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ദ പ്രിൻസിപ്പൽ ഓഫ് ബോയൻസി ദാറ്റ് ദ വെസൽ ഇസ് ബീൻ പ്രൊപ്പൽ ത്രൂ എ വാട്ടർ സോ ഇഫ് ദർ ഇസ് ഇൻ പ്രോപ്പർ സ്റ്റെബിലിറ്റി സ്റ്റാക്കിംഗ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് പ്രോപ്പർ ഓർ എനി അതർ സർക്കംസ്റ്റാൻസ് ദാറ്റ് അ റൈസ് വിച്ച് ആക്ച്വലി എഫക്ട് ദി സ്റ്റെബിലിറ്റി ഓഫ് ദി വെസൽ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് വെരി ലൈക്ലി ദാറ്റ് ദി കാർഗോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ബീങ് കാരീഡ് ഇൻ അ ഷിപ്പ് ഇസ് ബൗണ്ട് ടു it is bound to have uh, that it is bound that there is damage or loss that is occurred to the cargo so that is it i believe that i've given a basic idea on what uh, on a few terminologies with regard to the carriage of goods by sea act i know it is it it may not be easy to digest in one go because maritime law is not a very conventional law and the terminologies are not very easy to understand and accept it requires a little bit of reading from your end but i'm sure that those who have listened would understand something on maritime law which would actually uh, enable you to understand maritime law in your future uh, readings or in your future classes so thank you so much for your patient uh, listening